For more than half a century, a dark mystery has lingered and cast long shadows over the picturesque city of Bergen, Norway. Discovered by unsuspecting hikers in the dense, untamed wilderness near Bergen in 1970, a badly burned body, soon to be known as the Isdal Woman, became the centerpiece of an extensive investigation. The case rapidly spiraled into a complex web of false identities, inexplicable circumstances, and intriguing eyewitness accounts. This intrigue was further fueled by the discovery of the woman's mysterious belongings in suitcases hidden in the locker at a city train station. Amid the Cold War's cloak-and-dagger atmosphere, claims of espionage lent a sinister edge to the investigation, suggesting the Eastall woman's fate might be tied to international intrigue and covert operations. Despite the Bergen Police Department's best efforts, the mystery surrounding the Eastall woman's death remained an impenetrable enigma, with every lead seeming to dissolve into the shadows from which it emerged. Now, new investigations have cast light on aspects of the woman's life before her tragic demise, offering glimpses into a narrative long shrouded in darkness. Details of her movements, previously unseen connections, and insights about her past, derived through cutting-edge technology, have contributed to a more nuanced portrait of the Isdal woman. Has the veil been lifted on this half-century-old mystery at last? Who was the Isdal woman? And can we finally piece together the puzzle of her life and untimely demise? The Discovery On November 29, 1970, during a cold yet clear Sunday, a man and his two daughters, aged 10 and 12, embarked on a hike across the foothills of Ulriken, the tallest among the seven mountains encircling Bergen, Norway. The journey led them through East Dalen, commonly known as the Ice Valley, due to the ice formations that cover it in the depths of the long Norwegian winters. However, the area also has a darker name, Dutzdalen, or Death Valley. This name is derived from its association with numerous deaths in the Middle Ages and a string of hiking fatalities in the 20th century. On that fateful November day, Dutzdalen would live up to its foreboding title. As they navigated through the valley, the hikers encountered an unusual burning odor, prompting an investigation that led to a harrowing discovery, the remains of a woman situated among rocks in a clearing, her body charred and nearly unidentifiable due to severe burns, with her head oriented toward the valley's entrance as if seeking escape. The state of the body, with extensive burns and minimal clothing, indicated foul play, prompting an immediate return to Bergen to alert law enforcement. This discovery initiated one of the most intricate criminal investigations of the 20th century. The Initial Investigation The investigation into the Eastall woman's death, spearheaded by Oscar Hortness of the Bergen Bureau of Criminal Investigation, swiftly transitioned into a major criminal case. Despite the initial promise shown by the team under Hortness's rigorous standards, the case proved to be riddled with complexities from the outset. The initial analysis of the body provided far more questions than answers. The woman was burned beyond any immediate identification, and the other evidence at the scene was loosely helpful at best. The only items near the woman's body were an empty Sinhalvard liquor bottle, two plastic water bottles, rubber boots, a passport holder, nylon stockings, a scarf, a sweater, a purse, an umbrella, and a matchbox, all of which had been burned in whatever fire had consumed the woman's body. Adding to the mystery was the lack of any sign of a campfire or wildfire in the area. However, investigators had found several pieces of burned paper and a hat with traces of fuel on it near the body. Early breakthroughs in the case came when a pair of sunglasses in an expired rental locker at a Bergen train station bore the Eastall woman's fingerprints. The locker also contained two suitcases filled with a puzzling array of items, clothing, wigs, currencies from multiple countries, personal grooming items, and a prescription eczema cream with the name meticulously scraped off. The removal of identifying marks from these items hinted at an attempt to conceal her identity, adding layers to the mystery. The sheer amount of evidence discovered filled the detectives with optimism, but they soon found the mystery of the Eastall woman would not be solved that quickly. Hoping to get eyewitness accounts, the Bergen police released a description of the woman based on what reconstitution was possible despite the burn damage on the body. The woman was described as five foot four with brown eyes, a small round face, small ears, and long brown or black hair. Her age was more difficult to determine, 
perhaps between 25 to 40 years old. A break. A pivotal clue emerged among the items discovered in the locker. A bag from a footwear store that led detectives to the shopkeeper, Oskar Rortvet, in Stavanger, Norway. Rortvet remembered the woman to whom the bag belonged. He described her taking longer than usual to choose her boots, and that she spoke to him in English, but with a strange accent. Notably, she smelled of garlic and was remarkably calm. She also fit the physical description police developed of the Eastall woman. Using the information provided by Rortvet, police traced the woman back to the St. Swithin Hotel, also in Stavanger and the first name of the investigation, Fenella Lorch. Using this name and description as a launch point, police discovered that the woman had stayed in nine different hotels in as many months, moving between the cities of Oslo, Bergen, Stavanger, and Trondheim. The woman's accent and calm, cool behavior left an impression everywhere she stayed, and she used a different alias in each location. Rumors began to circulate that the Isdal woman was a spy, a theory that briefly seemed to be supported, by the discovery of a coded note belonging to the woman. However, the note was decrypted and revealed to be a simple list of the places the Isdal woman had stayed. As investigators were tracking the woman's paper trail across Norway, the Bergen Police Department had an autopsy conducted on the woman's body. The results painted a grim picture of her final moments, indicating she had died from smoke inhalation and burns, with a significant amount of sleeping pills found in her system. Despite the intriguing leads, and the mysteries surrounding her identity and actions, Hortness abruptly declared that the woman had died at her own hands. As far as Hortness was concerned, the Isdal woman immolated herself, and the case was officially shut in February 1971. The mystery lives on. The intrigue has only deepened since the official closure of the Isdal woman case. Both amateur detectives and professional investigators have tirelessly pursued the full truth behind her enigmatic demise. Even members of the original investigative team, like Harland Osland, have expressed their doubts about the official ruling. In recent years, new details have continued to emerge. For instance, a handbag was discovered buried 40 meters from where the body was found, alongside the testimony of a policeman's son who believed authorities deliberately obstructed the investigation. Additionally, there's a story of a man claiming to have encountered the Isdal woman on the mountain shortly before her death. Radioisotope analysis of the Isdal woman's teeth has offered clues about her background. It suggests she was born near Nuremberg, Germany, around 1930, and raised in French-speaking Belgium. This is supported by handwriting analysis, which indicates she attended school and learned to write in Belgium. A fresh examination of old evidence has also revived early rumors of the Eastall woman's involvement in espionage. Deciphered codes and a deeper review of the brands found among her possessions suggest she spent time in France and Switzerland before traveling around Norway. If the espionage claims hold true, questions remain about her affiliations and objectives. Her use of multiple aliases and constant relocation led some to speculate about connections with countries like the Soviet Union. Recently released classified documents from the Norwegian military revealed that the Eastall woman's movements in Norway closely aligned with the testing of the then top-secret Penguin missile system. Aimed at countering the formidable Soviet fleet, the missile system's tests might have attracted her attention. A Stavanger fisherman reported seeing her near the missile tests shortly before her death in 1970. This evidence offers clear, if not indisputable, signs of espionage activities, likely on behalf of the Soviet Union. Among the advocates for the spy theory is Knut Hortness, whose father led the original investigation. The discovery of preserved organ samples at Haukeland University Hospital has enabled advanced DNA analyses, sparking an international collaboration. An Interpol Black Notice has sought matches from European law enforcement databases. Despite these technological advances, many results remain confidential, keeping the Isdal woman's identity and the circumstances of her death shrouded in mystery. The tale of the Eastall woman continues to captivate and embodies the hope that technological progress and the unveiling of historical secrets will eventually uncover the truth. Yet, until clarity emerges, her legacy endures as a quest for truth amid the shadows of the Cold War period. The Eastall woman used multiple aliases and traveled extensively. What do you think was the reason behind her constant movements and secrecy? Let me know in the comments. 
As always, thank you for watching Dark 5. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.